All right, this lesson, um, I have no idea how long this is going to take because the options for this are just so unlimited. Um, this is what I'm loosely calling the analog digital hybrid project. And the thinking in terms of analog digital hybrids will completely blow apart everything that you know and love about digital art and expand it to a ridiculous point where the options become completely unlimited and can get really, really fun. So what, um, what you're going to need in terms of just sort of preparing for the project are some sketches, maybe some analog drawings, maybe even just like marks on the paper for texture. Um, you can take, uh, old paintings that you've got like this um you know a painting and uh use that for color um you can actually create color swatches like i've done here or actually scanned and photographed uh bits of colors of markers and colored pencils and so on and even done some uh, some color mixing with them so you could, you could dab colors that you wouldn't normally pick so that you could go through here and um, you know get colors by dabbing around here and then create a color palette based on that rather than um, picking arbitrarily in the color wheel okay these are all Prismacolor color pencils, and you notice that depending on whether they're like how they're photographed or exposed or where you click on here, it'll get you a slightly different color. Even within like what would be normally considered a black, it doesn't go all the way to 100% on the color wheel. Um, so I think that's that's interesting. Um, so having some images scanned, maybe we'll develop this this strange rock um, as a, as part of a demo. There's this one that I worked on a little bit. I did a gouache painting that I didn't really like that much. It looked like this. Um, I did it in like an hour or so, and uh, I realized there were mistakes in the overlapping and just all kinds of colors that I didn't prefer, and maybe it was too textured. Um, so I went back into it and bumped up certain color contrast ranges and um, unified the sky in this layer and just flattened out some areas so that it would work a lot better. So this is one particular way to work analog digital hybrid is to take a take a drawing or a painting that you've done and sort of improve it. Um, another one is like this one where it still remains a drawing <coughs> and it looks like I've <coughs> done the drawing with marker. However, what I've done is I have taken the sketch layer which normally would look like this and I have put it in multiply blend mode going layer by layer I have uh, bits and pieces of uh, da like what I've done is for the colors I dabbed those uh, marker tones that I showed you previously uh, these ones and used them to do a backing under this particular scan of this sketch. And so what's interesting is it looks like a marker drawing, um, but it's really not because, you know, I have the digital work hiding under that with a multiply blend mode on top. Uh, multiply basically just darkens whatever is under it. And you can never, if you're painting on a layer with multiply blend mode, you can only ever go darker. You can never go lighter. So that's one particular way to use the analog digital hybrid idea. Here we have our analog. And what I want to do is just sort of crop this out so that we have a sort of a, a, a working document here. Um, it's fairly big. We're still like, um, we're still at a good image size. If it's not a good image size, like 
two thousand is fine to, to begin. Uh, I could bump it up to four K. That would probably be better. Um, what I probably want to do is quickly duplicate that layer and use a different background. And then I'm going to change that to multiply and use it on top. Um, I think I'm going to delete the background layer and I'm going to add a new background layer. And what I'm going to do is bring in, um, I, I, I like to scan blank paper, um, which is just sort of silly, I guess. But to me, it's, um, useful to do so. So I'm going to do a, um, bring in a warm, uh, scan piece of paper that I've got. Um, and I'm going to transform it to be bigger. Um, this is a scan of like your standard Strathmore paper. And, uh, I love doing this because if you then subsequently like, um, get a brush out, especially a brush that looks like it's, uh, you know, pen and ink, like, um, something simple like this brush or something like that, you could, um, you could then sketch on it and, um, use like a darker version like that. You could sketch on it. And at the end of the sketch, you know, whatever you're drawing, whatever, it winds up looking like an actual drawing that you did on paper, especially when you're zoomed out on it, or if you like posted in a low fidelity format, like Instagram or something. Um, so I love that because it, it kind of like tricks the brain into thinking that something's happening, uh, where it's not really here. Even it looks like I've done a marker drawing on that Strathmore paper. Um, even though I totally haven't. Right. And then I could go in and I could, um, you know, I drop these particular colors again, I can get a light version of that color and then I could start painting in with a different brush. Um, I'll just use the hard round, um, regular pressure opacity one. And then I could start saying, well, okay, I can start bumping up this, this, uh, this color again, or this value range and staying in monochrome. But now I'm shifting from the black and white monochrome that I had and I'm going into a, uh, a sort of tan monochrome which in itself is interesting. Okay. So this is, um, this is just one direction that we could go with this, right? There's a hundred different directions that we could go. What we could also do is say like, take something that doesn't make any sense with it. Like, um, I have that architectural demo that I just did and I could put this in there. Um, but I could put it in really big and where I get some of the other colors in there, maybe like that. And I could pull it in at, with like a different blend mode even to begin to pull colors. Or even just leave it normal. I could even turn down the opacity a little. And I've still got the overpaint here. Without it, it would look like that. So this is potentially interesting too, right? So I'm like mixing in all these different analog and, um, and digital layers. So what I could think about doing potentially here is, um, taking these cool colors that I've got here, um, bumping them, maybe swinging them towards more of a violet and then painting up on this, uh, on this top layer and, uh, pushing my color range forward. I could turn this off for a second. I could snag this color, turn it back on, come back and think about working on that color range, maybe even like getting super saturated with it.
and then these colors could make interesting half tones down here. I think. Like they're already pretty interesting, but if I throw in some of that, um, you know, the shape language sort of lame up here, but maybe I could do um, a light blue here for the sky. And start to get rid of some of the architectural shapes. Okay, then zoom out and check it out again. Um, it could be pretty interesting. You know, I could um, keep treating this kind of like in a painterly sense. I could also take this, um, this duplicate this layer again, and move it up, and have like have it really kind of doubly multiply. Or I could turn that off and then restack the layers so that I'm still painting under this thing. So that no matter what I do, I'm going to get a, um, like a darker color than I think. Which I, I also like as an approach. I think this is interesting because this allows you to kind of like paint under and paint really loosely um, and then you can go in with cooler versions of these colors in the backgrounds and then in your true shadow areas you can go in with any color that you want to right And again, this can be pretty loose. And the cool thing about it is that you're not changing any of your line work. So if you go over the lines a little bit, it doesn't really matter. So there we go. There we go. There we go. So this is like a quick version of an analog digital hybrid. If we could do something more involved, you know, like we could say, well, all right, on this top layer, um, let's duplicate it just so we can get it back. Um, turn it off though. We could then hit our eraser tool and then we could start to like, you know, get rid of some areas that we don't like. Like, I don't like all these, necessarily enjoy all of these marks in the sky, so I could start to keep them, but soften them through erasure. And then this is going to make it lean towards a digital painting again. Um, yeah, I like that a lot, actually getting better so then I may have to like turn that off entirely and look at this layer because this layer is kind of bad um, so what I might need to do is come in and just like clean up this layer more so when I turn it back on it looks a little better And then go back in and keep erasing, you know? So what's neat about this is that we're um, we're now in the space where we don't even know if we're, if we're making like digital art or if we're making analog art or whatever. Um, and to me, that's that's like endlessly fun and we can keep playing back and forth with this piece, um, you know, now we can, because we've been in 
and multiply blend, blend mode, we haven't been able to get like this super bright color range that we could get, you know? Um, so we could go back to this particular color range. Whoops. Go back to this particular color range and we could start finding some good uh, highlights to add. We could work on, like, we could overpaint some of these lines that we don't need or, or don't like, potentially. And we could work on developing a range of contrast in the shapes where we need that. I think what we want is we want a progression of highly saturated to less saturated as we go across and brighter over here on the left side. So we're going to need to catch some of that light here too, but pull it down just a little bit at the further we go. So we're over here and we're kind of just out of that range. And by the time we're here, we need to really be away from that. So now we're getting more of a progression there. And then, um, we might need more of this darkish area over here. Might need some of this to kind of come down to this area, make the shadows make more sense. Some of these areas, you know, we kind of overdid the the shadow bits, so we can come in and correct our shape again back to the uh, original analog. Um. Zooming out again. This is getting pretty decent. We can lift up the color a little bit in here, probably. Get more, um, get more color contrast. I think we need um, a little more like textural detail along this edge here. So what we might need to do is get um, get this edge broken up more with texture. So that we're really working into this uh, this idea that we've got like uh, a very rocky edge here and it's not like, it's not perfect. Okay. One thing we know about texture is that it occurs mostly on the transition where we're going from a light area to a dark area or vice versa. Um, 
and that's just going to help us a great deal. So we can pull that violet into there, correct the shape a bit more. I'm going to knock down that value again. Pull this violet back here. Okay. There we go. So a lot of this is like manual labor, and I think um, to me that's fun too. Like just going through and saying, well, all right, you know. I can do this by like automated methods or I can do this by hand. You know, part of the charm of of analog work is that it's done by hand, but you can make digital work that's just as much done by hand or similarly done by hand. It shows evidence of of like, you know, you putting the time in. Okay, so I think this is kind of just a simple, a simple little tool um, with results that can be very complicated and very interesting and, you know, progress in a very um, intense way. So there we go. Um, and we just keep evaluating, you know. Just keep pushing, keep going back, keep looking for opportunities to cor make corrections, you know, check our fundamental properties of images, you know, look for transitions and so on. Um, let's see, what else could we do? We could create um, analog textures over the whole thing to kind of give it a, or at least part of the thing, to give it potentially stranger rockier appearances so let's see here let's grab another layer um, we'll pull in this thing this is just like um, a random texture that i made out of some paint we'll do the overlay blend mode and see moving this around we could create textures that are in, in and of themselves rocky um, and if we zoom out and we hit transform again, we could rotate this so that it kind of even makes sense with the image itself, right? So even there, it looks sort of cloudy and decent. Um, then, as always, we can... Um, so this is just giving us textures on top of an already like established image. Then what we can do is where we don't need it, we can hit this eraser and we can erase bits of the texture. And we go and we and we just come back to these areas that we painted in manually, right? So, and if we use uh, an eraser tool that has a little pressure sensitivity to it, um, that can be really good too because um, Oops, I want to turn that off. I don't need the rulers. Anyway, that, like if we have pressure sensitivity, that's nice because we can do like subtle erasures. Like this got too light of a value here. So we can subtly lift that out. There's too much contrast there, right? See, this is fun. This is getting to be really, really interesting. And now even that blend mode suggested like other colors that we could go in, in here with and other shapes that we could use. Like we could use this, um, this, these lights in the sky to help us with the sky and, and all of that. Um, it's just sort of fortunate the color range sort of worked out there. Um, so there we've got it. I think that's all that I need to really show you about this project. So just to review, like some tricks of the trade, 
we can scan blank sheets of paper and use those at any point in the layering stack. We can use um, blend modes and opacities to bring in bits or whole pieces of, of like other paintings that are totally unrelated um, just to create another layer. We can use an a multiply blend mode with an uh, with a, like a color under layer to do a uh, painting style where we don't actually change our sketch um, and then we can paint on top of that and make corrections we can also add in um, you know texture overlay layers that have nothing to do with anything and erase into them uh, and use like overlay or soft light or hard light blend modes depending on how or choose a different blend mode depending on how much of that texture we want to um to work with or how we want it to how we want to style this out so it's really um there's a lot of options as to how these things can look um but i think subtle blend modes like overlay will work well and you still can go on top of all that and put your original sketch back on top or uh, turn it into a fully realized like painting so um, you know and remember you can use uh, that like scanned images or other paintings that you've done to dab colors and create a new color palette um, so that's it for now and I think this should get you started on this project you know, as always, the imagery is up to you, like what you want to paint is up to you, and I'm going to help you develop it no matter what it is. Um, and this should get you started on a range of techniques. Um, and as you play around with this, you're going to discover new ways of doing this that are unique to you, and I would highly encourage that.